So I went watching G.I. Joe Retaliation the other day. I'm, it's hard to say whether or not someone would like this film. I think it really depends on how much you like the first one. Now, if you didn't like the first one, I don't think this one's going to make you a fan of the film series. But if you did like it, you probably will like this one. Although it's a shame that most of the characters and actors didn't return. I think of the entire cast of the original, there were like three actors who came back and four characters. Because I think Cobra Commander got recast. I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, you still got Snake Eyes, Storm Shadow, and a small appearance by Duke. Uh, the main character, instead of being Duke, it's uh, Roadblock, played by The Rock. It's a bit of a shame that it's not a character from the first one. That's, that's the focus of this one. But, you know, The Rock did a good job, like he, well, pretty much always does. But, yeah, other than do Cobra Commander, Snake Eyes, and Storm Shadow, like, every character in it is entirely new. Oh, and um, that guy who mimics people who don't recall his name. Yeah, him. The, the ultimate issue with this film is, well, other than the lack of returning characters, it's kind of the lower scale of it. It's kind of like, I feel like this is the way it was with Dragon Age 2. That it's not necessarily that the story is bad or anything, it's just that after what happened in the first one, this is kind of much lower scale. I mean, the first one, G.I. Joe, was about, ended with this big climactic battle in this like underwater base, like you'd expect to see in the show or in the comics. Maybe even the toys, but this one's just kind of a shootout on an island. It's not a bad sequence, and there's a lot of really cool moments, but... It has that loss of it loses that sense of scope that the original one had. Hopefully, with GI Joe three, and yes, you can tell they will do a GI Joe three. They'll kind of get some of that back. I mean, they have to, because like it can, it'll be the climactic part of the trilogy. Um, they have changed a few things. Like in this one, GI Joe is like the organization is much smaller. Like instead of having like hundreds, maybe thousands of people, it's like three dozen, and they don't wear those uh, black body suits anymore. Like, other than Snake Eyes, they all just wear normal camo gear. Which I guess makes more sense, but... It kind of means there's, like, l lack of continuity with, uh, with the designs here. And, you know, minor spoiler, but... The Joes are on the run from the uh, US government. We never really get the sense that the entire organisation is under attack. Like, we never see G.I. Joe headquarters even once in the film. And... No, like, because that's why, that's why I think uh, the plot would have worked, probably worked better if they hadn't done that and just gone with something like it's about a small group of Joes, you know, like they could be like a squad led by The Rock, and this group have been separated from the rest, they've lost contact with headquarters, and it's about them trying to find their way back. Then you could justify none of the other characters being in it because you say, oh, well, they're a HQ or on other missions, and then you could have just gone from there. That would, I guess that would have been even smaller scale, honestly, but I think it just would have worked better given the limitations with the cast members returning. Like what the hell? Uh, on the way home, though, I thought of this idea that they should do a film that's G.I. Joe and Transformers, because that's happening in comics and cartoons and stuff. And apparently someone involved with the creation of these, these films, uh, like the producer or director or whatever, is open to that idea. So they should do that, like G.I. Joe 3 and Transformers 4, have a few little cameos and references, just build it up a little like the Avengers did, and then just do this Transformers and G.I. Joe film. I mean, basically imagine it like this, Transformers, the movies, but instead of the human focus being Shia LaBeouf, it's the G.I. Joes. I mean, that sounds just amazing. I imagine even if someone didn't like the, the G.I. Joe Transformers films, they'd probably still go and see it, just because, well, it's G.I. Joe meets the Transformers. Oh, and uh, if you had complaints with the first one about it, G.I. Joe being, like, multinational organisation, in this one, everyone who's a member is American except uh, Storm Shadow. In, not, not Storm Shadow, uh, Snake Eyes, rather. Like, everyone else is American. That's always odd. I'm sure, like, when you see flashbacks of Storm Shadow and Snake Eyes as kids, I'm sure Snake Eyes was a white kid in this. I'm sure he was Japanese in the original. Then again, it has been, what, four years since I saw the original? So, I don't know. Just strikes me as odd. But anyway, like I said, if you like the first G.I. Joe film, you'll probably like this one. 
if you didn't like it, you're probably not going to like this one. And, you know, if you're not a fan of G.I. Joe in general, you know, if you've never seen it or anything, I think this is a pretty decent action film to tide you over until, what, May, when Iron Man 3 comes out. So, yes, it is a decent film. You should probably check it out, unless you didn't like the first one. And that's all from me. Bye-bye.